Hey everyone, welcome back. Roll the intro now. Recently, with Gran Turismo 7 being released, I got really interested in wheel controllers for both Sims and arcade racing. The prices, however, suck. The G29 alone comes at around $400, but if we check on AliExpress, ooh, a bit cheaper. How is this wheel? Let's find out. This fairly heavy box took only one week to get to my front door. I can get you a pretty girl in a minute. I am John Luke Master Pimp. The box has six sides. I'm going to show you three. When opening the box, you are greeted to numerous flaps. Orange piss flaps from China. First thing we notice is that this box is kind of loose. Luckily, it's only the clamps. I'm pretty sure they can take a beating. Just like Wesley Crusher. The manual comes in English, Chinese, Japanese and German. It has information on setting up your wheel, changing configuration, things like that. This little warranty card, we don't need. Boy, we got three spare suckers. I will book some for later. And here's the wheel. This time I hope it is really good. On the side here, we have the gear stick. And along the back, we have the pedals. So each part is wrapped in a bag. Like my wife. Which has another bag attached. A micro USB cable. The cable for this controller is 2 meters long. On the back we have a USB port for controller. Then sockets for headphone, pedals and gear stick. My gear stick is huge. Oh, and it looks like a car. See? There's a light. To mount this we have two options. We can use these suckers on the bottom. Lick and stick. If you don't like these, you can always take them off. Boop. For a more secure mount, we can use these clamps. Just push it in and pull it down. Rotate these clockwise to secure them. You'd have your desk around here. On the front of the wheel, we have a D-pad and PlayStation style buttons. In the center, we have prog, mode, share and options. On the left and right, we have L and R buttons. The paddle shifters at the back feel kind of weak. Turning this wheel is remarkably silent. This uses a bungee as well as vibration motors. No force feedback here. Compare it to this model here. Or how about this one? Games or systems that don't support force feedback, there'd be much unneeded stress on both the player and the motors. What is the steering angle and why should I care? I'm glad you asked John. Well, let's start with 180 degrees. This means that the steering wheel can only rotate 90 degrees left or right. Controllers like this feel more like a toy. When we have 270 degrees, the wheel can move left or right even further. This is usually standard for games like OutRun 2. Arcade racers. 900 degrees, you could turn the wheel really far left or right. This would be great for either truck or car simulators, like Gran Turismo or the ones you do drifting in. Knights of Fire. We can use a switch at the bottom to switch it from 270 to 900. There's a bungee inside, so it springs back to center. Switching at 270, we can only go so far. Next up, the pedals. Metal plated. They don't feel too bad, but they all feel the same. It would have been nice to have more resistance on the brake to give it a bit more realism. On the back we can see it doesn't use pistons, it uses like a spring system. And this one and a half meter cable runs from the pedals to the steering wheel. On the bottom it's mostly plastic and the rubber feet here prevent it from moving. If you wanted to use shoes, you can open it up if you have the space. The gear stick is very similar to a normal car. Push it in, move it to the very bottom right to get the reverse. Honestly, this feels pretty neat. At the top left, we have a switch from high to low gears. This is for the truck sim, as is his parking brake. We first tried the controller with the PlayStation 3. Out of the box, the wheel sensitivity is very low. And it's very awkward to use the gear stick like a high-low shifter. Gran Turismo 6 also had the same problem with low sensitivity. As this wheel emulates the PlayStation 3 pad, 
We cannot use the manual gears with clutch, so we need to use the gear shifters on the back of the wheel. We can actually fix some of these problems with the V9 tool. I saw this from the Play Store on my Android phone, and this connects to the wheel via Bluetooth. Here you can see diagnostics and data sent from the wheel. Here's the accelerator value, brake, and clutch. If we tap down here, we can get to the preset screen, then edit each of the settings per game. We can reassign each of these inputs to be a button on the PlayStation 3 pad. We can change the accelerator pedal to be any of these buttons. The buttons that we can select are depending on the system we're plugged into. Let's increase that sensitivity. In 900 degree mode, we can see that it's not very sensitive at all. So what we can do is hold down the mode button at the top until it flashes, then move the wheel to where you want the maximum range of input. Press the bottom button, then it's set. More sensitive, making a much more enjoyable PlayStation 3 experience. There is one more sensitivity option. Hold down the prog button for three seconds and press left for normal sensitivity. If you hold down prog and push up on the D-pad, the input springs out first and then slows down later. If you want the more precise option, hold down prog then press down. This is the option for little to no acceleration. Now in 900 degree mode, we can set the range of input. Currently it maxes out here. Hold prog until it flashes. Spin the wheel until we want our maximum range. Push the options button. And now our steering wheel is set accordingly. All right, let's check some games. First up is Euro Truck Simulator 2. We can add the settings from the app. The wheel vibration motors are fairly decent as is using the gear stick with the clutch. As the clutch has no real feedback, it can be difficult to hit binding point with the clutch. With the two switches at the top of the gear stick, it's quite obvious that this controller was designed for this game. Here's Project Cars. The V9 tool did not have this in the game selection, so we had to make our own game configuration. The gears and clutch worked okay, but the lack of force feedback made me feel like I was missing something. On Assetto Corsa competition, all of the cars are using sequential gears. It's unfortunate we can't set this gear stick to bounce back to center. For this and many other games that need sequential, it'd be better using the paddles at the back of the wheel. Moving on to some emulation, here is Initial D5 on Technoparrot, using the real gears option in the settings. As the game in the arcade uses a sequential gear stick, you won't be needing the clutch. Makes much more sense to use the paddles at the back. We can use this controller on Emuelec or Batacera, and it works perfectly. Using MAME or FBA, you may need to set some options. If you're playing the older arcade racing games, it's better to have no false feedback on your wheel at all. Here's Power Drift. Super Chase. And Indie Heat. Who is the target audience of the PXN V9? I think this is where a circle graph comes in handy. We've got casual gamers on the left. They're looking for the best bang for buck. Sim racers on the right looking for realism, false feedback, and all the bells and whistles. The V9 sits in the middle. 
It serves as a cheaper entry point to a controller that has clutch and hate shifter with high system compatibility. If they could add sequential shifting to the gear stick, like the G25, it would have been incredible. The G29 does not have this feature, and many go out their way to mod it with elastic bands. You can perform this mod yourself, but it is a bit ghetto. Let's get to the pros and cons. This full-size wheel can be used on many systems. As we can also change settings, this is a very versatile controller. The paddle shifters feel kind of weak, and would like to see more pedal resistance for the brake. There is only a handful of games that are already set up on the app, so if you are expecting a pick-up-and-go controller, this is not the one. This is the double-edged sword of having system compatibility and having more control of your wheel. Is this worthy of getting? Well, do you like trucks? To finish, here's a quick thank you to all of those on our Patreon. Thank you for the continued support on the Pandori project. Looks like this month we're going to have another update for Pandori, as well as a few more Pandora box reviews and MULX tutorials. Can I sing a song? Sure, show us what you got. I like trucking. I like trucking. I like trucking. And I like to truck. That was beautiful. Thank you, engage the hard lift. <laughs> Are you drunk? Anyway, if you enjoyed this review, please hit like, subscribe, and the bell, please. And as always, I'll catch you on the flips. Ta-ra! If you want a good time, call on 181-811-8000. 181.